the big J, the big J, Shulamit's group, Shulamit's group has finished Safer Tanya. First book, only the first, first book. book. The first book's pretty big too. Yeah, 53 so chapters. Is, is, okay, so this is the theme. That's what you get for like you, you learn a lot of years, you, 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 you cover material. So. Yeah. Please. So um, first of all, um, mazal tov, mazal tov. And I mean, good chodesh. A chodesh tov and to everybody. It should be a very revelatory chodesh. And um, I have to say, uh, this Tanya, oh, we've been learning for three and a half years. And um, uh, the, the, uh, I have to say that this, to prepare this brief, like 53 chapters in 15 minutes, was one of the most challenging preparations I have ever done. Like, <laughs> how can you do that in 15 minutes? So this is just like a very brief, uh, like very brief little introduction, brief, whatever. But I hope that it can invite you all to take um, another look. So anyway, I like to, the, the, the real name of the Sefer that the Alter Rebbe wrote and published in 1796, which it took him 20 years to uh, produce the, the, the Sefer, Sefer Shabbenoni, that's what it's called. The Book of the Inbetweeners. We say Tanya because that's like first word. And, but it's also like the possible Jew. That's what it's about. And that's what his target was audience is, like for the possible truth, for all of us, the strugglers in our relationship to Hashem. So he based the book and his teachings on the books of the Shalah HaKodesh, the Maharal, <coughs> and teaching the Shalah, his uh, Rabbi, yeah, uh, the Maharal, and teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, the Magad of Mezrich, Abraham Amala, who is one of the sons, and among others. So there are 53 chapters in this first book because there are more than one book. And, but it parallels, it's also parallel to the 53 chapters, the 53 days that the altar ever spent in prison. And with including the introduction of the Tanya, so it's 54, which also parallels the 54 um, partios of the written Torah. So the, this, the Sefer Shabbat is a book of <laughs> profound knowledge. Sefer Shabbat the, the book of the in-betweeners, the intermediate. So it's a book of profound knowledge to understand our spiritual psyche, our emotional and mental anatomy. So, and the mission statement of the Tanya of this book is Kikaro Alecha. That authentic service of Hashem in Torah and mitzvahs is very accessible and doable for us all in our thought, in our speech, and our actions. That it's natural for us to serve Hashem with our hearts, but it doesn't always seem that way. So how is it practical and accessible to us? This is, and this is the, I mean, you can't answer this question in one sentence in 15 minutes, but this is what the Sefer is about. How is it practical? And he really gives a lot incredible um, um, advice, spiritual advice. It's, and it's really was based on um, a lot of people coming to the altar Rebbe at that time um, to, for, for spiritual advice. And there was so many people coming, we couldn't give everyone individually. So he said that he's going to put it in a book and give it out to everyone. So well, how is it practical for us? How can I do this? What can I bring to my relationship with Hashem that would make it my service? And how can I put love and awe into my mitzvahs. So uh, he writes that the teachings, these teachings are the long, short thing. What does this mean? So they're not a quick fix, but real arduous spiritual work that despite our struggles and challenges, practical service of Hashem is within our reach and is a sustainable goal. And um, that's a really important thing. Okay. So a revolutionary concept in Tanya is the understanding of 
what is a tzaddik, a righteous person, what is a benoni, the intermediate, the in-betweener, the struggler, and the rasha, what's a rasha, the wicked person, wicked one. So conventional understanding in the Gemara and other Torah literature, understand the tzaddik as a person with more good than bad, the rasha, the wicked one, with more bad than good, and the Bayoni is the intermediate one with half good and half bad. But according to the Tanya, the tzaddik is the perfect person, both in all of his external behaviors and his internal spiritual psyche. <clears throat> he never sins in his thought, speech, and action, and he is without struggles because his soul has a very high spiritual source. And um, without, <clears throat> and so <clears throat> without this very high spiritual source, it's Sadiq is an unrealistic, unattainable goal for most of us because Sadiqim really are very rare. The enemy definitely, according to Tani, really does not sin in all of his outward behaviors. Internally, he struggles in his heart with his desires and his thoughts and his emotions. He always wins the struggle, but he is never free of the struggle throughout his whole life. And so with the Bainini, the conflict remains. At an emotional level, the Bainini is still torn between love of Hashem and the desire for self-gratification. Though he has achieved enough self-mastery not to allow these feelings to surface behaviorally in any way. So um, the Alter Rebbe has great goals and aspirations for us and great belief in us to aspire, to strive, and to struggle to become Bainini. Outwardly, externally, the Bainini behaves like the Tzadri, and one would not know the difference. But inside, internally, the Bainini and the Russia have the same struggles. The difference between them is that the Bainini always wins the struggle. So we all have parts of us that are holy and parts that are unsavory, that we are not so proud of. How can we reconcile these two dimensions to be able to live a spiritually wholesome and happy life? So our ideal service of Shem does not mean becoming a tzaddik, the best possible person. It means struggling to be the best person possible that we can be. So another foundational concept in Tanya is the concept that every Jew has two identities, two souls. And Ram Chaim Vital, who was the main student of the Holy Ari, in his book, Shara Kodesh, which the, Abra, the Alter Rebbe quotes in Tanya, Sha'ar Hakadusha. Um, so he writes that every single Jew has two souls the human, natural, animal soul, called the Nefesh of Ahamis, and the divine, godly soul, called the Nefesh Elohis. Two entire souls with conflicting interests and inclinations within a single psyche. Um, so in the words of Rabbi uh, Eben Yisrael, Al-Rasham, Rabbi Steinsholz, in Tanya's worldview, we really do have two different minds and two sets of conflicting feelings. This helps us in validating our inner struggle and finding effective ways to tackle them. There are two complete independent souls in their own right and not merely levels within a single soul. Two entire personas with each with a full set of and motion, abilities and needs with are their own thoughts, the speech and actions of each soul. The first soul, the animal soul, the natural soul, is enclosed in our blood and in the, the left part of our heart. And it is the human soul, which we need for all of our normal, natural um, human activities that's necessary for life. But it's also the source of our negative traits, such as anger and jealousy and hosting and laziness and depression, et cetera. Okay, its most influential character is that it is self-centered, selfish, and egotistical. It is set up to fulfilling its needs for itself, but it can also 
do good things. It can also motivate acts of kindness and compassion, but it's for its own sake because it feels good for me to be kind. And I get pleasure and enjoyment out of feeling kind and being good for another. It makes me feel good. So that's like a very self-centered. But the truth is the reason that we came down into this world really and truly is to refine and elevate our, our natural Bahamas, our animal soul, because our godly soul is that piece that's perfect, that's God. So we don't need, it helps us to do the work of the refinement. The second soul, the godly soul, is a uniquely Jewish soul, the divine soul, the nefesh elokit, which is literally a piece of God within each and every Jew. We are children of Hashem. We have the same DNA as our parents. And Jewish people literally have DNA of Hashem within us. So the same godliness that is in the greatest tzaddi is also in the laws of Jew. It is the essential essence of every Jew. And the godly soul operates um, through the brain. It's our perfect peace and it doesn't need any refinement. Why is it so revolutionary to have two souls? Could we all struggle morally and come to a crossroads during every day? We have our Nefesh of Bahamas telling us Indulge in the presence of this work, like eat that second piece of seven layer cake and ice cream. Don't go out of your comfort zone to help another. Stay where you are. You know, let somebody else do the work. Our godly soul, that's just one example, but I know you can all think of many examples in your everyday life where you come to a little struggle. Yes, no, should I not? What, what, what does Hashem want from me? That's the real question. So, and that's the difference. Like the godly soul has an agenda of doing what Hashem wants, doing the mitzvot, doing the will of Hashem. That's, that's all it wants, just the attachment. So we have our self-centered identity, which is life is about me and what I want. For the godly soul, life is about serving Hashem, what Hashem wants from me at every moment. How do these two souls function within us? So in the Russia and the Vedami, there was a constant battle going on between the Nefesh of Bahamis and the Nefesh of the Peace, the divine soul. Each one wants full control of the person. Do what I want, do what I want, oh, no, no, do what I want. Um, the Nefesh of Peace wants the person to engage completely and totally into to in with Torah and mistress with awe and love, love and awe. In the Vedami, the godly soul and the Nefesh of Bahamis are both in full strength. So the Benini is identical to the tzaddik in thought, speech, and garments of expression of the person, but inside the Benini, the Nefesh Bahamis is in full force with desires and passions for materialities and jealousy and anger, like the Russia, like most of us. But the difference is, is the Benini, he has the struggle, but he always wins it. <laughs> so how is this relevant for all of us? Give me two more minutes. Um, so, there are, so there are two types of people, those who struggle and those who do not struggle. And the Sefer Benoni, the Alter Rebbe, really had in mind that's the target. The strugglers are the target audience of the Sefer Shabbat That's who the Alter Rebbe wrote this book for. And that's why he called it Sefer Shel Benoni, Sefer, the, the, book of, the spiritual book for strugglers. It's called Tanya. Tanya, well, just because it's the first word of the first. So Tanya teaches us. Uh, so how can we manage this struggle between our two souls? So Tanya teaches us how despite our struggle, we can become open because of a special power and key to success, which is the natural power of the mind to rule over the heart. Moa, Shalit Alale. And this is an incredible concept way before modern psychology came with cognitive behavior. No, way before, what, it's 200 years ago, right? That's our power. That's what we have, the mind. We can think, we can have, and that's why it's so important to learn to get knowledge because then you can take, make better choices. Um, so, yeah, it's a very deep point. Actually, I was going to tell you to sit, read, read it right out from here. Um, 
Ki hamo, this is from the Tanya now, I'm reading the words of the Alter Rebbe. Ki hamo shalit alalev, kamo shakitu v'rai mehen yaprashat pinchas, v'tovot v'tavo yitzaro. Because the brain rules over the heart. It's written in v'rai mehen yaprashat pinchas by virtue of its innately created nature. Shekak l'tar adam b'dalato, because man was created from birth, and um, shekol adam yechol, that's very important, that every person may, with the power of the will in his brain, the will of creative, his mind's understanding, restrain himself and control the drive of his heart. But it's obviously, we all know, not an easy ride, right? It's the life work that we have. So the Benini wins the struggle, but the battle he doesn't win. He can win, uh, sorry, he wins the battle, but he doesn't win the war because the war never ends and requires constant vigilance. But when we do win a battle, when we do make a right choice, there is, we bring down great spiritual godly life into the world and into our soul. And that's like incredible thing. And it brings so much great joy to Hashem. So that's like amazing. So let me say L'chaim, Thank you for all listening. No, the Alter Rebbe is the father of Hasidut Chabad. He's the author of the Tanya from 1796. Like he started. Rabbi Shneer Zaman of Ziyadi. Okay, so his son was the father? Is it seven? He's the first one. He started. seven after Six. Six. Yeah. Wow. 1796. Yeah. 1796. He published the Tanya. He worked on it for 20 years. What do you mean that Benini always wins the struggle? I don't see it. So that he, so that he, he, um, the person has become big. Let's say like that. Right? The person who has really become. Abedini has done all, all the arduous work. He doesn't have the soul of Itzadi, you know, just like basically most of us, but he's worked on himself to an extent that anytime he has a struggle, he, his divine soul overpowers his, um, his nephew to Bahamis and he makes the right decision. So, you know, he does, he keeps the mitzvah. So it's a high level for now. It's a high level. It's a high level, but look at the, he, he. It's hard. It's very it's hard. It's a hard. It's a hard. Yeah, Judaism, right? right? No, but the thing is, but the thing is, like we have goals. It's a goal, you know. So, like okay. you try. You, that's what he said. It's not, you know, you be the best possible person that you can be. That's the point, you know, and to serve Hashem with love and joy and awe. Like, just talking, different. He wasn't talking about the Mitzvah. Different. It was different, but so was it different in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu going up to Har Sinai. So the thing is, the Torah is for for all for forever. So Moshe Rabbeinu said he has incredible kavod for for our generation. He looked to see that somebody puts out to fill in. I think we have to I gave you such a little brief thing because I had to put this whole book in 15 minutes. <laughs> but really, he talks about meditation. Join the class. Join yeah. the class. It's, you know, she's starting a whole new section. You're welcome. Join and learn you know, more. How to Hashem, what to do? A meditation. How to how to have that relationship? What exactly are the words? Meditation to love to, to bring us to a level of love of Hashem. And I, I, I I'm very. I want I want to thank Hashem for and also Judy for giving me this opportunity to be able to to teach and learn because you know. It's, it's so different. I had to prepare so much for each class. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> so really, wow, help thank me. you very much for doing that. Okay, good. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, Joy. Does this, before I forget, does this belong to anybody?
It was lost like two weeks ago. Does it belong to anybody? Okay. We'll see. All right. Um, uh, I think the humor is going to be at a kind of a low level today. Like, um, that's all I, that's all I got. So, <laughs> okay. So, all right. Um, ladies. Okay. So we're going to be doing, we're continuing the laws of Shabbos. We've been working our way through Mona. We finally got into, to, uh, uh, rabbinic rabbinic <coughs> restrictions. Okay, we started last week and we spoke about the um, uh, the two areas that are that are limited in uh, rabbinically. Very distracting. Excuse me. Okay, so what we're so we're, what we're even though you're allowed to make a temporary structure according to the Torah, according to the rabbis, because it would be confusion, we're, we're not allowed to make a temporary structure. Okay, and it falls into two different areas, things that are like a, an ohel, a tent, like a roof, and things that are walls, a, a mechitza. And the, and the laws are actually more, more stringent when it comes to an ohel, okay? And that's what we're, we're, we're working our way through. Okay, so we said that, what, what is the definition of an ohel? It's anything that's, four, that's one tefach, which is about four inches, okay, from the ground, Okay, and also that has that has a dimension of, of four tefachim. No, this. Okay, anything, any structure that you would create that's that big and that high off, off the ground would be would be considered a temporary structure. So now it's like putting a tablecloth on a table, not a problem, right? Okay, so what what an umbrella, an umbrella is a problem, exactly right. House of Cards. I think it's a bad policy to begin with. But <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> okay, so the, are the so within this area of Ohel, it's divided into two categories, and it. Okay, so the the Ohel can either stand on on a, a partition. Right? In other words, like if you have solid walls, right, you can see that it's much more solid. It gives the appearance of giving of being much more, much more um, permanent, right? Because that's the issue here, what it appears to be. Right? We said that it's the rabbis created these laws because they were concerned about people becoming confused. So there's far greater confusion in seeing something that's got four sides and it's it's you know standing strong as opposed to something that's standing on less than three partitions okay something like like a chair okay like you know pretty much it's not a permanent thing same thing with a table the table it, it's it's built on these legs so it's considered um uh, you know um uh, non get a lot of trouble with this non <laughs> non-partitioned uh, 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 canopies and partitioned canopies. Okay. Um, so in other words, whether, whether it has sides or if it has just has some, um, something, whatever it is supporting it. Okay, so an umbrella is like the, is, is a very good example um, because the, the, the criteria is whether something that, that does not have partitions, right, would be permissible. Something that just stands on legs, it would, would be permissible. Something like a chair and it would be permissible. But if its purpose is to protect something that's underneath, then, 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 then it becomes like a, a canopy. So that's why an umbrella, which does not have partition supporting it, does not give the appearance of having any kind of structure, does not seem like it's a strong permanent thing, um, but since it has this function that that uh, 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 a canopy <coughs> and ohel has, um, it's it's not permissible. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have a tower. It has two sides and then a rounded uh, front, not square. And I'm wondering if that because it's rounded, it's not a side. Yeah. Well, what, what would you do with it? I mean, you wanna. Off. What do you do? Yeah, before, I mean, what are you doing with it on Shabbos? Well, we're well, we're taking the right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. There is a way to do a shower on Shabbos. Oh, really? 
Okay, we're not going to yeah. talk about that at this moment. No, that's a, that's a no because you, you get covered. And then you just put what you need to involve. That's how the story Okay. Can you build something that's round? Hold on, bro. It's really about the number of, of partitions that support it. That's really the issue. It's not so much the shape of it, it's the number of, like, for example, if you, if you want to build a, if you want to build a, a um, like a bench, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a bench that's like a solid, you put, you know, you can take a take two solid blocks. They're solid. They don't have sides. They don't, and and then put a board on top of it. Okay, that would be permissible. Okay, because it's not doesn't have like it, it because it's a solid thing and it's only two parti partitions. So that would be that would be something that was. <laughs> is possible because it's not partitions it's um non-partitions it's like just legs okay so and also and the does, purpose is the top of it, not the underneath it. right so like if you were open right. because it's raining you want to get right. the underneath right. it wouldn't be <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. when i was you know when i was a little kid i i don't i don't know what it was but my maybe that's why i'm having a lot of trouble with I, I would spend all day long underneath the table. Like I would take my toys and go under the table and just like spend the whole day playing under the table and then come out for lunch. You know, that, that was about it. So, so, um, so sometimes the tabletop does provide a shelter, but, but usually not. Okay. Okay, all the tables are, are, are fine. Did you ever see Dr. Coyle? Dr. Coyle did. <laughs> I'll tell you, my mother was happy about it. <laughs> Fourth kid, uh, she's taking care of it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Probably, probably not allowed. Probably not allowed. No. Okay, because because the point in making them is so that you could be underneath it. Right, so even though putting, um, I don't know why you would do this, but even if you if you put it for no reason on top of, of then then it's not a problem. But to, to to create something that you can be under. Yes, that was your <laughs> right. 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 Okay, um, like putting a um, putting a screen, putting a, a netting around a a, a, a baby uh, carriage. Yeah. Okay, you you really can't do it. You really can't do it unless you've started it already before Shabbos. In other words, if it's already on the on the um, carriage and you're just you put a baby in, no, just, no, you can like sneak it. No, but I mean, if you're just like pulling it forward, you're just adjusting it. So actually, so so it really only so for for something without partitions. Okay, so if it's needed, um, it it would not be allowed if it's needed to protect the area beneath it. Okay, that's what we said. Um, if it's uh, it has width and airspace that's um, you know more than a one tefa, tefa four inches. Okay, and also um, if it's if it's been if it's being made for the first time on Shabbos. So that's that's this thing of putting like a, a cover over a baby carriage. If it's already on there and you're just moving it, then it's then it's okay. All right. Um, let me just see. Uh, just one more example, two more examples of this. Um, if you have a stack of books, okay, you put a, another book on top of the two stacks, okay, you've, you've created something of a, of a covering, right? It, it's, it's perfectly fine because there's nothing, you're not protecting anything. You're, you're not making, you know, unless you're... No, it's like you have two stacks of books, right? And then you put another book on top. So this this O hell that you've created, it, it's not a problem because it's not a useful space. It's not going to do anything. Right? This bench that you're making with the two, you're not interested in in what's going underneath it. You're only interested in, in, in because it's making, not, because it's not useful space, right? Right. It's not. You're not using it to to create anything to protect anything. Okay. And a chair. And the other example is uh, your example, like putting putting a. Um, blankets and things like that over a, over a few chairs. You know, its purpose is to you, you, kids do it so they can climb inside. So one should probably discourage their children. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly right. Or they could leave it up from before shop before shop. Well, then their mother make, would like that. <laughs> yeah, make make your you know make make your old hell before shop is so it'll be okay. 
All right, a um, few announcements. Um, uh, uh, just a second, you'll be next. <laughs> okay, so um, so first of all, uh, Ramanit uh, Revitzen, Sarah Kaplan is finishing her series. This will be the last of the series that she's been teaching on the week the Torah was given. And um, we're there, folks. You know, this is the week the Torah was given. Right? This, we've, we've gotten there. Slowly, slowly counting up, we, we're, we've gotten there. Um, so you want to be at this final class to hear, to hear all the answers. So that's at 1230. Um, um, unfortunately, uh, Miriam Krause isn't feeling well today. So her, her class is, is canceled. So there are other classes to choose from. And if you have any questions about which class you would like to go to, please ask me. Okay, um, Shavuos, Shavuos. Okay, if any of you did not see the schedule, please take one, There's, they're around. Beautiful schedule that Tova made. Flyer Tova made. Okay. okay, so it's Thursday night um, and we're starting at, at, at 11.30. Okay, that's about enough time to finish your cheesecake. And, um, 11.30 and then we're coming, and then uh, and it's at Shevachaya's gallery. Okay, so um, if you don't know where that is, also you can check with me. And we have a full program. We have some really beautiful classes, beautiful speakers. Um, one of the things that we're doing is we're doing some um, Chavrusa learning. We're going to break into groups and maybe even in these groups, we're going to finish the whole Torah in one night. Wow. I think she, it's, she laughs. She doesn't believe it can be done. Oh my God. I'm standing on one foot. Exactly. 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 We have really a very fine book that we'll use as our study guide. And hopefully, um, it's called A Tale of Two Covenants. Covenants, like Britot. Brisson. His name is. Uh, Family pros. Okay, that's that's all I have to announce. Anybody else? Two quick announcements. One, my granddaughter got engaged. Yay! Okay. 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 No. Go ahead. Pardon me? Oh, Shavuot. Oh, like like vows, right? right. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. He. I mean, the, he talks about the covenant of Abraham. You know, meaning Eretz Israel and the covenant of of Matan Torah. So those are the two, but you're right. That's what it is. Okay, um, Ori, you wanted to. I just want to update everybody. First of all, thank everybody for coming. Um, it's been a
The fundraising campaign is going to end in the middle of June. Okay. Um, I feel confident that we're going to reach our goal. I feel very, very close about that. And I will tell you that I reached my goal of raising a thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> the only other thing that I want to mention is it was also brought to my attention. I spoke a little bit about how the country how to ask how to know ourselves and make ourselves to see raise the money for this. Um it was brought to my attention how people send out letters, people did some emails, WhatsApp. And how to follow up on it. Because that's the next step. If people didn't respond, how do I follow up on that? So if anybody wants to know how to follow up on that, please contact me directly. And I'm very, very happy to show you and help you tell you ideas on how we can approach the same people and still be able to bring money in from that. And so okay. really in June 15th. Dr. Sham, I'm bringing the bottle of champagne. So really, 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 uh, um, starting the next Monday night, I have a list of letters to lay a lipstick at the Dr. Kabbalah for the reviewing of Force for Women on Hitler's Shabbos and Hitler's Cockroom and other laws pertaining to women. I'm not sure if they cover Nita, uh, but other things. Um, God willing, I'll get a flyer. So we're working on a flyer to get it together, and I'm going to be talking to the other uh, people. Fine. 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 It's going to be at. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Sunday, Monday nights, right? Monday nights? Monday, Monday nights. nights. Um, and we're trying to set it up so it'll be on Zoom as well. Okay, very good. Yes. Thank you. So I wanted to introduce you last week, but um, the framer was, was on vacation. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm oh. Oh. Wow. Beautiful. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Wow, wow. that is so beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Anybody else? Quickly. One, one, one more after this. So I started reading um, a couple of times a lesson a day. And um, if anyone is interested in studying that with me, just find me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So important thing to learn. Oh, sorry. All right. Both of you. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It happens. It happens. I'm looking for another long covering. Oh, and I'm happy guys if anybody has anything for me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're very good. All right. Just last last one. How many bedrooms? She's an apartment. She's an apartment to rent. After all this beautiful announcement, might will sound like a daily routine, but there's a house cleaning business as well. <laughs> as you know, number one, we have for those of you who are here first time or second, fundraising is extremely important, but we have to eat every day as well. So there's this box 
and uh, breakfast and early and uh, morning classes are 25 shekels and afternoon class is 40 shekels plus it would be nice if we would remember every time to clean after ourselves because we live here with some and i know we get so excited about the aura we're such on a spiritual level so we don't want to deal with anything Earthly, but we have to do what we have to do. Plus, I, I made an announcement. It's my personal request as well. And I noticed that people were telling me people have allergies and smells. Please consider not to use jelly perfume or very smelly oil when you come to this little thing. No one together, last people get hot, etc. That would be very nice. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Okay, I think that's it, everybody. Let's go learn some Spanish.